A warm welcome to you. This is Remember Palestine, the show dedicated to highlighting the plight and resolve of the Palestinian people. My name is Amina Taylor. This week, the second freedom flotilla to Gaza set sail, departing just after the first anniversary of the attack by Israeli commandos on the Mavi Marmara, left nine people dead and dozens injured. More than 10 vessels and hundreds of activists will be sailing to break the siege on Gaza. We'll be speaking with some of the organizers and participants in this year's historic event. The program will also be finding out about the reactions of those stuck on the Gazan side of the Rafa crossing, hoping to see the border into Egypt permanently reopened. Plus, what the imaginative people of Gaza can do with a little imagination since some spare car parks. But before all of this, we talked briefly about the Rafa crossing and the dashed expectations of the Palestinians on the Gazan side of the border. Here is Press TV correspondent Ashraf Shannon with this report. Restrictions at the Rafah crossing point are still in place for thousands of Palestinians registered to cross the border with only a few hundred Gazans are allowed to leave Gaza through the Rafah terminal on a daily basis. Some people say that animals are treated better than them at Rafah. When we look around us, we see that Karm Abu Salim crossing is open for animals and fodder while we stand here in the scorching sun. Cows are allowed in through the Israeli crossing next door while we have to wait here since 6 a.m. Although the border is open for eight hours a day as promised, even women and children are not let through it freely. I must have three surgeries and I don't know what to do. I'm afraid that I could collapse and die right here at the crossing. There must be some consideration for humanitarian cases like cancer patients. I came here uh, to visit my mom from Canada and um, we thought that uh, the Egyptian people said that there's lots of um, um, facilities and um, they're, they're making it easy for people to go through, but it's not true. People in Gaza are disappointed at the Egyptian authorities for failing to fulfill their promise of permanently reopening the crossing. We wanted to give Egyptian soldiers flowers, but they refused to take them. And I felt that the Egyptian soldiers don't like us, although we like them. We want the Egyptians to know that they must reopen the crossing so that sick Palestinian mothers and fathers can get medical treatment abroad. So far, restrictions have not been lifted despite assurances from Egypt. Anger and despair is the mood of the day in Gaza after hours of waiting at the Rafah crossing. Ashraf Shana reporting for Remember Palestine, Gaza. It's hoped the second flotilla will ease some of the frustrations of people who are facing that daily at the border and inside Gaza. We have with us in the studio the Vice Chairman of the International Committee for Breaking the Siege on Gaza, one of the nine organizations which spearheaded this and last year's flotilla events. Mohamed Swala, welcome to the program, sir. Thanks. Where are we now with the flotilla plans? Uh, we are now in the last stage of preparations. Uh, we have now uh, around uh, 12 uh, ships ready to sail. Um, and uh, already we have uh, hundreds of uh, activists are now already in, in the area there in uh, Greece and other uh, countries. And we're just waiting, you know, the end of the month to, uh, to leave. What's it been preparing for this year's flotilla in light of what happened last year? Um, uh, we know how the Israelis behave. And we uh, put in our minds that the Israelis can do anything. Uh, and we, all the activities are, uh, activists uh, are ready, really, to, to face uh, uh, the Israelis' uh, policies. We understand that the Palestinians are paying the price every day inside Palestine because of the crimes of the Israelis, because of the siege, you know, killing the Palestinians and uh, uh, not allowing, you know, even uh, med medicine and food to, to uh, you know, to uh, cross to Gaza. Uh, because of this, uh, all the activists are ready really to, to pay part of the price and to be, you know, um, uh, to, to, to behave like, you know, like Palestinians. We, we like to put ourselves in the same situation and to say that if the Palestinians are paying that for their freedom, we have to do something for them. 
All right, and Mr. Mohamed Swala will be with us in the studio after we speak to my next guest, because he's a good friend as well as our correspondent here, Hassan Ghani. He'll be making the voyage from Greece to Gaza alongside more than 300 activists traveling, as we just heard there, on around 12 boats ready at the moment. He was, of course, on the Mave Mamre last year, and he joins us from Athens in Greece down the line. Hassan, you can hear me okay? Hassan, are you there? Well, we'll try and get that line patched up, but in the meantime, just go to my guest, Mohamed Swala, who is still with me in the studio. I guess when you're planning for a big event like this, anything could happen. And as you say, everyone is prepared. But we're talking about nine people dead last year. That's very, very difficult for activists on this side of the pond to, to reconcile with. That, there is real danger here, Mohammed. Yes, after that incident, we believe that the Israelis tried to send a, a, a message for, uh, to all of us, mm -hmm. saying that you know, the price will be uh, very high. And, uh, and can be, you afford to pay yes. it? Yes. Yeah. And everyone in Mavi Marmara and the whole uh, flotilla, uh, flotilla one in that time, said that we are going to go. Uh, next time in a bigger flotilla and, you know, a bigger number. And now we think we are fulfilling our, our, our promise now. The number will be, the number of the ships will be more and the number of the activists will be more. And we have now, just like to, to, to tell you and everybody, that we have a big number of politicians, MPs, MEPs, writers, novelists, um, you know, uh, activists, people from everywhere. Uh, our plan was to bring people, delegations from around 100 countries around the world, and, and we, we, we think we will we'll come to that number. All right. I believe he's with us now. Hassan Ghani. Oh, dear. It's not going well for us at the moment, is it, with us and Hassan Ghani. We'll try and come back to Mr. G when we get an opportunity to do so. But, Mohammed, one of the key questions here is about the political intent of this. What statement are you trying to make by breaking the siege on Gaza? We think uh, uh, that the uh, uh, siege on Gaza is a, an, a crime. And everybody, after the, the uh, attack on the first flotilla, even the uh, Western politicians, all of them said in that time that this is an illegal siege, and it's a criminal siege, and it should be finished. What happened after one year is because of the uh, Israeli pressure and because of the American pressure, now we, we, we saw that nothing happened. We like uh, now to send our message again that the people from everywhere uh, have the same you know, uh, uh, strength to go again and to uh, remind everybody around the world, and the politicians, especially the politicians, that this will not be acceptable. And we will continue doing our work until we see this criminal siege completely finish. Well, I'm almost afraid to ask, but Hassan Ghani, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Third time's a charm. How are preparations going in Greece, sir? Well, it's, uh, it's quite different from last time in the sense that there are a lot more organizations involved, and because of that, it's uh, somewhat chaotic, but it's also uh, much more multinational. There's a lot of secrecy around what's going on because last time around, you may remember that out of the nine ships that set sail or were due to set sail, at least two of them were suspected to have been sabotaged. So in an, in an effort to prevent that from happening again, there's a, there's a lot of secrecy. We're not allowed to film the boats themselves, even though some of them are here in Athens. Um, but there's a sense of optimism here. Um, I remember last time around, I was perhaps too optimistic, foolishly optimistic, that with so many different nationalities on board with such a huge flotilla, the Israelis would be perhaps crazy to uh, launch an attack on it. Um, but obviously uh, they did uh, and killed nine of the aid workers in the process. So. Although people are optimistic here, they are uh, tempered by the experience of last time round. You obviously had a rather personal experience uh, after being in close proximity with a number of those who were shot and indeed wounded on the boat last time. What are your personal thoughts going forward, Hassan? Well, 
as I said, um, and as you said, the, the last time round, uh, this was a huge. It was, it was perhaps a first. This time round, people are going forward with kind of a renewed vigor. They're determined to show Israel uh, that, despite what took place last time round, they're not, they've not been cowered uh, into backing off. Uh, and of course, there is a, lo- a lot of disappointment at the fact that this time the Mabi Marmara, on which those aid workers were killed, will not be taken part. But at the same time, it does have its advantages in the sense that it dispels the Israeli myth that uh, this flotilla um, operation is uh, is purely a Muslim or mainly a Muslim uh, Turkish-led and organized operation. Without the Turkish ships, this flotilla is going ahead and it's going ahead with more ships than last time round. And of course, it's also different in the sense that last time I boarded the Mavi Marmara from Turkey, where there is a huge amount of public support uh, for the flotilla, for uh, the Palestinians. But actually in Greece, it's not so different. The, the Greek people generally have a lot of support for the Palestinian cause and have done so uh, for decades. Um, of course, this time round, there's also a U.S. ship, which is uh, going to be carrying, I believe, around 50 U.S. nationals. I've been told almost a third of them are actually Jewish Americans, and the ship is draped in an American flag. So it'll be interesting to see if the Israeli military does decide to uh, attack the flotilla again. Uh, it, it will be uh, it'll be interesting to see how they deal with that situation, l- launching an attack on an American flagged ship with uh, almost a third of the passengers being Jewish Americans. There's a there's also a new factor this time around in the sense that some of the Israeli media is actually almost going as far as describing the journalists embedded with the flotilla or on board the flotilla as uh, enemy combatants. Um, and they've said that, uh, you know, journalists get killed on board this flotilla. It's their own fault that this Israeli media is going to be embedded with the Israeli military. So there's a lot more pressure this time now. Some of the governments that were silent last time round have uh, voiced opposition to it. Not all of the governments. The Swedish government has said that its citizens have the right to express solidarity and freedom of speech and so on. But many governments have uh, pressurized the flotilla and the participants from their countries into not going. And there is some speculation that the Greek government, which has remained relatively neutral so far, may be pressurized into trying to discourage or stop the boat from leaving its shores.